Welcome everybody, this is Denny with my YouTube channel, Why Is This True? And joining me again today is Carl Mollison with tmarkangel.com. And Carl and I are going to continue with the uh, channeling series that we've been working on where we're contacting people who are involved in exposing, um, the, for lack of a better term, the alien agenda, cover-ups, that kind of thing, uh, UFOs and uh, contact experiences. So uh, today we're going to um, ask Carl to channel uh, a woman by the name of uh, Barbara Bartholik and uh, she wrote a book um, a long time ago I think it was in the 90s came out in the 90s and the, here's the book here and it's called uh, Barbara the story of a UFO investigator and she was um, she worked closely with Jacques Fillet they invested a, a lot of uh, community uh, cattle mut mutilation cases in the American Southeast, and uh, she's from uh, Oklahoma. She's, she lived in Oklahoma, and her research began with hosting the Heaven's Gate people before they were Heaven's Gate, and she went on to work with seven years with Jacques Vallée, and he was portrayed, Jacques Vallée was portrayed as the French scientist in the movie Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and uh, they traveled around the U.S. and around the world researching cattle mutilations, UFO sightings, and especially abductions. And she also worked closely with uh, Eve Lorgan, who I've interviewed, and also Dr. Carla uh, Turner, who's, who's passed on. So, um, Carl, thanks for joining me again today. I want to give you an opportunity to talk, uh, talk, say, bring up anything that's been going on with you uh, for our listeners, and then we'll get started. Okay, thank you, Danny. Uh, I'm delighted to be here, and this is quite important work because there's much to be done to bring forward true information about what is really going on in the world. This is uh, a very complex, multi-layer drama that's playing out. Everyone sees it in a different way. Everyone's living in a somewhat different reality. They have their political biases, and that's the world they live in. They're human, and they don't see the divine. 
They are manipulated relentlessly by extraterrestrial forces and dark spirits, and they have no conscious awareness whatsoever that that's been going on their entire lifetimes. So things need to change, and that is really what the shift in consciousness is all about. This has been talked about for many, many years in the spiritual community, but few people in the spiritual community realize that the path back to a higher place is a return to the divine and making a connection to the divine, the creator of all it is. And it's urgently needed because we are being relentlessly manipulated, both by dark spirits and extraterrestrials, multiple extraterrestrial races among us who are controlling the reins, they control all our institutions, and they control us with mind control. So the early researchers who nosed into these things were responding to human plight, to human need, as people would come forward bruised and battered, emotionally shattered, who've had encounters and the memories are emerging. And the same is true in people recruited into the secret space program who have come forward, who have disquieting memories of things that took place and they're trying to make sense of it. They have all been manipulated, and there is a great urgency, a great need, and much disinformation. And this is the especially troubling aspect of this all. There's not a place to go and get truth about things because so many people are given false information. It's implanted subliminally through direct subconscious mind programming. It comes from a variety of sources, there's mostly blinders, so people don't see the deep issues and the deep underpinnings of things. They take it just so far and they think, well, that's it. That's the story. Okay, there's, there's ETs. It's got to be a good thing. They're advanced. They'll, they'll know what to do, and, and they're going to be our friend, and they've probably evolved well past stages where they'd ever think of warfare and so on. These are all naive notions. And I, I'm sorry to be telling this, but we are in danger from these beings. They want our planet, they want us gone. It's really that simple. They use various means to control and manipulate, and they exploit us in various ways. Some of it is uh, fun for them, but they are in earnest. And the only thing that's put a finger in the dike, so to speak, has been creator, to not let them take over. Creator's waiting for us to go back and rejoin the ranks of the divine warriors and to put our inner divinity back into that focus that we need to be looking upward and we need to reconnect with all that is in the, in the holiest realm. That is our origin. We're extensions of Creator. So that doesn't apply. Oh yeah, we can just adopt secular humanism, and we don't need a God anymore. We, we can do it all. We know how to do this. Well, look around you. How is that working out? <laughs> look at all the human institutions. Nothing is working. They're all flawed and faulty and cause as many problems as they solve. So we need to reconnect with that divine perspective, and it's really who we are. That's the tragedy and the irony of this. You know, it's, it's not that we're these lowly, evolved biological organisms that came up out of the ooze and oh yeah there's a god up there but you know maybe it's not a good god maybe it's a judging punishing god and we got to watch out and or maybe since we're kind of on our own anyway and god never shows up we don't even need to think about that and we got to figure this all out ourselves well none of that is so we are extensions of source energy and we're in charge here that's the goofy thing about this whole enterprise. We're in charge of the planet, and God is watching. God is in us, partnering with us in many ways, but subtly below the scene. And we have a responsibility for everything that we do, and it will affect all of our future. So every day there's choices. Are you going to do this or are you going to do that? Every moment there's a choice in front of you, how to spend your time and what to turn to and how to dedicate your life. So I'm here to add my voice and my perspective to things based on 
thousands of channeling sessions with beings in the light, including Creator, and having worked with many, many people with all sorts of difficulties, and many who have been manipulated by ETs, and members of the secret space program who are recovering from things that were done to alter them. So I know quite a lot about this. And one of the other aspects, sadly, is that every segment of the communities most focused on these issues and seemingly enlightened are being undermined as well and manipulated and given false information. Most channelers aren't channeling who they think. More than 90% of channelers have been co-opted. They're talking to an Anunnaki psychic who comes in and pretends to be an archangel or some other divine figure or whomever they're trying to contact. So this creates huge problems because they'll tell you lots of things that are true. So much of the information out there is true up to a point, but there's always a limit. You can't go past that limit. And that's the, the tragedy of it. So the spiritual folks are encouraged to meditate and manifest and raise yourself up and work on your vibration and so on. Okay, that's all well and good. But they're not bringing God into the picture at all. And there's a reason for that. Their minds are closed. They won't go there. They think, well, that's an old notion. and We don't really need that sort of focus. You know, we, we can do this ourselves with our inner energy and our, the power of our consciousness and so on. And there's a lot of things we can do. I mean, they're, they're correct up to that level, yes. But they don't go beyond that level. And the same is true in the disclosure movement. It's, it's focused on an expectation someone's going to save us. Benevolent ETs are going to swoop in. The government programs are going to come out of the closet and it will have been seen to be a very useful thing and it's going to be helpful and we've been benefiting all along and now it'll just get better. And all of these perspectives are flawed because the ETs are very much in control. And if we don't do something different and bring in divine help, we're going to be in worse shape. So they're tolerating our spiritual uh, fledgling status. They don't like it. They're afraid of it. That is our true way to safety. We have to get back in touch with the divine. And it's not complicated. It's just reaching out very simply. Right. In whatever way you're comfortable. Close your eyes. God, come and help us. Raise us up. Protect, guide, heal, and support us and move us to a better place. Right. Help the ones who are out of alignment, who are coming into our realm and wanting harm for us. Raise them up too. That's it. If we all did that and meant it, everything would shift. I've been told this many times. But that's nowhere close to happening right now because most people are s still asleep and they're focused on technological solutions, prosaic human solutions. Oh, we just got to get the right people in government, you know, who are more open and then they'll the truth and things will be better. Right. So so that's my that's my piece. I, I do a lot of spirit releasement work on people. They're the reason humanity is in such a mess. Spirit attachments are almost universal, and they've influenced the ETs. They are the reason the ETs in our sphere are dark. They have been corrupted by dark spirits. This is the this is their dilemma. We're in this together in an ironic way. Yeah. Right. So we need to get rid of those. So I do spirit releasement work. I help transition people to the light who get stuck earthbound. One out of three people right. don't get to the light readily. So this is a huge problem. Right. But this starts early with, with spirit predation. They go after infants and children, and then they cause all kinds of problems in the person. That's where bullies come from. 
That's where criminals come from. That's where people... Politicians with, come from. What's that? Politicians. Politicians. <laughs> the, the ultimate the, sociopath. Exactly. <laughs> the narcissistic personalities, sociopathic uh, individuals. That's the closing <clears throat> down of the connection to the higher self. Right. So you're cut off from your conscience, you're cut off from the flow of love, you can't feel love and compassion for others. So you're just a self-serving animal with your animal needs, and everything seems justifiable. Right. That's where these people come from, and it's, it's a corruption, an inner corruption that, that's happened. Okay, well, well with that, I'm, I'm going to, uh, to move us on here, and I want, to do, I want to point out that before we do these channeling sessions, I check in with Carl, we have a running list of of um, many people that are known, many people that aren't known. Uh, I think a lot of people do know about Barbara, but it, when I made a, an inquiry with uh, Carl before his class that he had last weekend um, about Barbara and Dr. Carla Turner. And Dr. Carla Turner had a successful transition to the light and Barbara did not. And so Carl performed uh, what they call a spirit rescue. So now we can actually do a channeling session with the light being who was incarnated as Barbara Pertholic. Um So, um, I get, you know, if you're ready to start, we'll start. If there's anything else you want to say about that, please do, and then we'll get started. Uh, the only thing I guess I would really want to emphasize, I perhaps left out in my tale of woe, is that <laughs> the, these are solvable problems. They really are. Spirits can be dealt with. If we ask for divine help and we know how to go about that, they need requests from the human side to right. do and, that work. And you're teaching people how to do that. You just recently had a class. It was 13 students there. Yes. And I, you know, I don't know how much you want to talk about that, but I just want to plug it, plug the fact that, that this is something that you're you're doing now. I don't know how frequently you're going to be doing it, but I mean, there, I mean, th this is tremendously good news that there's more people out there now that can do what you can do. Because um, you're busy, yeah. you're, you're almost at the point of turning people away, or you are turning people away just because you're so busy. And so the logical answer is to have more people that you can refer inquiries to where you know that they're going to be doing what you do correctly. Yeah. Yeah, I have put together what I call the Lightworker Healing Protocol. And it, it enables a person, anyone, to work with Creator and do spirit releasement, to remove attachments, to clear a location, to rescue an earthbound spirit, and to do the same for animals. The nucleus of all the steps applies to each of those circumstances. It's basically healing and some very advanced healing, novel ways of healing that I've been taught by the light. Okay. To make this as robust and thorough and comprehensive as, as possible. In and, this, one and this was lesson. a successful class. I mean, you, it's a, I mean I, I, we have a, a mutual friend who had an experience where he was actually able to do what you taught him how to do during the class. Yes. And that's the report I got. He's, he's written an article about it. It's going to be uh, um, where the, the tentative plan right now is to do some edits on it, and then it's going to get published on my on my website, whyisthistrue.com, and I'll, I'll and I'll alert people uh, who's follow who's follow us that that when that's up, so they can read it. And this is basically a firsthand account of someone who took your class and then it was a able to successfully apply the teaching, not weeks later, not months later, but during the class. This is what happened. Yes. So this is no small thing. I mean, a lot of people will spend years learning what you're teaching and only years after they've started learning are they actually successful in that regard now I don't know yeah. if I'm exaggerating here but that's been kind of my experience with the limited mm -hmm. amount of exposure I've had to this subject well this is a good case in point and so let me just just answer just respond to that a little bit because people can work under their own steam and their own power many psychics most psychics do that they use their own intuitive ability and their own perceptions and devise their own ways and they learn from one another and so on. If you go through Creator to do that, you'll do better. 
It'll be more powerful. It'll be quicker. It'll be more certain. You'll see more. You'll have a greater reach. That was my experience. I started out under my own steam doing remote spirit releasement and some other things. And when I started working with Creator to do it, it got better right away. It turbocharged everything. Right. So that's an example. I can take people who've never done anything like this, put them through a weekend training, and help them make a connection to Creator and make something happen that's real and significant and helps the whole of the human collective because we're all in this together. We're all interconnected. Right. So it, it's that simple. This, this doesn't require ha high technology. Right. And I've been told or years of study. Or years of study. Yeah. Yeah. And it's because of who we are. Right. We are already created to be in this mode. We've just been manipulated to believe we can't. Right. And we've been disconnected from above and below in right. various ways. So it's a it's a handicap. Right. But the main thing is to request help. Whether you see it intuitively or not, as an advanced psychic medium might, doesn't matter. Right. That's not relevant to the exercise. If you know what you need to do and you ask the divine realm for assistance, chances are it will happen. And it doesn't matter if you, you see God in your mind's eye or you don't. Okay. So th there's there's answers here. That's that's the beautiful thing about this. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad we I'm glad we talked about that because people should know about what you're doing. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead. Um, in the interest of time, which we don't have much of today, unfortunately, let's go ahead and get started with uh, the channeling session with Barbara Bertolic. This is Barbara Batalik speaking. Hello, Barbara. Thank you for joining us. Was your death due to natural causes, or would it be more accurate to say that you were murdered? If it was murder, was it at the hands of the reptilian aliens? My death was not a consequence of natural causes or a sequence of events leading to frailty and being undermined then by physical problems that were natural. This was orchestrated entirely from first to last from the extraterrestrial and their grip on government agents and clandestine organizations wanting a tighter control of all of human affairs. They saw me as a threat and they took me out. It is that simple. This does happen to a number of such individuals who rise to prominence and threaten to become too visible an authority to talk about their dark doings. This is a self-protective self mechanism they employ on a regular basis. There are many whistleblowers, workers for the light, and would-be saviors and champions of the human cause who are neutralized in this way. Mine was no different. Can you explain the situation regarding your unsuccessful transition upon your death? Did this experience involve the alien agenda for humankind? This is a quite unfortunate problem to be discussing, for we do not wish people to fear their death, to fear what might happen. All will go through this at one time or another. But yet, when asked directly, one is obligated to approach the response with some forthrightness and due regard for the genuine seeking of knowledge. And so we also understand it serves the cause. 
to show the reach they have and the depravity behind many of their workings. So in our case, they were poised to swoop in with dark angelic minions orchestrated through the Anunnaki spirits who are out and about. The Anunnaki were the first interlopers on the scene many thousands of years ago and controlled all of society for a great length of time. They are still present and they will return in numbers and in the meantime send legions of spirits of deceased Anunnaki who deploy the dark spirits associated with the fallen angelic realm to attack and to cause all manner of difficulty for the living and also those in transition. Such was the case for me. I, I was singled out for special attention to be attacked in this way and dragged down. This is another way they can extend their reach and maintain a grip on people to keep them neutralized. If they keep someone in limbo, unable to reach the light and incarnate for an extended period of time, it is very analogous to simply putting them in jail and taking them away from where they can be effective. So this was done to me and was quite an unpleasant fear. The great event was the rescue performed by your channel in coming to find me and raise me up by first removing those dark spirits and then I was able to have calm for the first time since my passing. I was under relentless torment and subjected to many kinds of coercive manipulations. This is a form of punishment they can inflict and it also serves as a kind of conditioning and of course is sport for them as it is their mindset. When your channel came to save me and raise me up, there were a series of events in bringing in light and feelings of love and joy that grew to a level beyond description. And this is a quite meaningful thing to convey to you that what your channel was saying before you started our interview was absolutely 100% accurate and true. There is a loving creator whose love is beyond measure, beyond description. It is the greatest of joys that can exist and far beyond anything experienced by a human being, no matter what heights they might reach with their life. If you think about this, human joy is often the contrast from a place of suffering and deprivation. And so the joy is about recovering from lack becoming elevated from a state of being ordinary and perhaps having an unfulfilled life and an unhappy life in many ways. The joy we are describing that goes beyond description is starting from that point where you are simply knowing all is possible all is about love and joy. 
and it is the energy of the universe. There is love in everything. And when you are a light being, you draw love from everything around you. The flow is unreserved. It is bountiful and it is there for all to enjoy. And the most beautiful part is that you never tire of divine love. You never become jaded. It is not like taking a drug, an opioid, for example, where the chemical sensations may be delightful, but over time will fade, requiring higher and higher doses, and eventually there will be little or no response at all. Divine love is unquenchable, inexhaustible, and beyond human comprehension. This is your birthright, and this is the way all need to be living, but are not. You are going through the growth phase, the learning phase, to become divine in the physical once again. And this will require lots of help. This is what I was doing. And the spirit rescue for me is a perfect example of the reach of human by partnering with the divine to make a miracle happen. This is the power each of you possess. And your channel in describing his recent course was an example of this where each student accomplished the rescue of an earthbound loved one people who were languishing, stuck in between planes and suffering enormously. They simply did this through reaching to Creator with the right words to make a definite request with intention for this to be. And it became so. All need to reach this level of awareness. So my early work was designed to bring things forward, to, to raise the alarm and help people understand something sinister is taking place. I am so very grateful for my spirit rescue. It is the most magnificent of experiences the contrast between where I am now and what I was experiencing in my time of torment is truly beyond description. And I owe this all to those faithful few who are working for humanity in a true way and doing the important work. This many more could do if they knew it were possible and made the choice. Okay, thank you. What was the most significant aspect of your work with Jacques Vallée? The most significant aspect was widening my perspective about the importance of the metaphysical and the paranormal in understanding the phenomenology Many who approach the UFO subject are focused on nuts and bolts, so to speak, on the drive mechanisms, the technologies through which they may teleport, move between dimensions, and so forth. There was little attention given to the aspect of consciousness as an interplay but the way the alien technology is instrumented and implemented involves their consciousness very directly. Jacques was on to this in understanding intuitively that these aspects of the mind somehow are involved in the phenomena. And this was absolutely correct. 
and it broadened my ability to look between the lines a bit and understand how there could be hidden dimensions and dynamics in play to guide people along and make them cooperate and be subjugated in various ways and for the ability of the aliens themselves to be so effective in knowing where their subjects might be and following them not only from day to day and place to place as they might move and pull up stakes to start a new chapter somewhere of greater advantage for career and so on, but also follow them from lifetime to lifetime. And this, in fact, is what is taking place. You are all long-term guinea pigs in their program. So you are tagged and you are caged and you are rounded up at their whim to manipulate and study and alter as they wish. So the work from Valet was tremendously encouraging and enabled me to focus much more intently on the levels of the mind and interactions in multiple ways. And this in exploring the subconscious levels enabled me to put together a kind of working model to better understand how manipulation is carried out and how the human can, in some instances, resist the manipulation. And this was something of great interest to me as well because the ultimate goal I had in mind was found finding a way to counter their manipulation and help people obtain safety by resisting their efforts. And it is much like putting up burglar alarms to dissuade human interlopers. If there were a way to do this mentally, I reasoned, it would help encourage them to move on to perhaps find easier targets. This was very simplistic and naive in the extreme, as I see from my current perspective. But this is where I was in those times. Okay. What was the most significant aspect of your work with the late Dr. Carla Turner? This was very much a broadening of outlook to consider family dynamics and family interrelationships with the whole abduction phenomenon. And this, in fact, is what is taking place, that in most cases, an entire family group or a subset will be involved together or done serially to suit the alien plans and the instrumentation of the various steps in their experimentation. But the idea of manipulating people as a family unit is very much integral to their objectives. They wish to understand all aspects of human psychology and the genetic interplay and use that knowledge to incorporate for their purposes into the DNA of the hybrid beings generated from the alien greys. And so this quest is designed to replicate the capabilities of human to embrace and incorporate the most positive aspects and to remove those less desirable or perhaps causing problems in the expression when they appear and are actively 
expressed within the genome. The process is taking place through not only observation and study of blood samples to determine gene sequences and so forth. It also involves direct genetic manipulation of the humans themselves. This is something that needs to come out because it takes things a step above the level of simply being the passive guinea pig and the idea that one can simply provide blood samples on occasion and serve a cause is woefully naive because the cause is to use and if necessary exhaust the human through relentless alteration and manipulation for reasons of their own with no regard whatsoever for the risks to humanity and its future. This is the most diabolical and depraved act of predation one could imagine. It goes beyond simply rounding people up and using them as worker bees, for instance, but to manipulate them on the most basic genetic level and interfere with the expression of love within the family and due regard for consequences to the young and subsequent generations is the most dire form of intervention and manipulation. She was seeing this play out in the consequences of abductees seeing their offspring be manipulated in this way and having a strong intuitive awareness of the potential that was going on to truly wreak havoc and have dire consequences on a larger scale. This is a very big warning when beings can enter the human plane and insert themselves and manipulate people to such a degree, this will lead to the question, what else might they be capable of? And what will happen when they achieve what they are after in their learning? These are questions that need to be pondered, for the stakes could not be higher, and people need to be aware and on their guard more than ever before. This is not a passive program. It is simply a program in a clandestine phase. When they come out in the open, things will not improve. They will worsen. And that will be another warning coming forward. What was your most significant discovery during your incarnation as Barbara Bertoli? The most significant discovery was the adding to the description of the abduction phenomena, not only much further validation and evidence of its reality, but to further bring forward information about the players involved. And in particular, the reptilian cohort who have been observed by many abductees, but with little understanding of the interrelationships, the potential hierarchy, and the implications for human as well. This is a sinister race of beings who are quite primitive. And again, this is due to the corruption 
by dark spirits to make them seek the rewards from domination of the weak and to feel pride and glory in their power and this is a pitfall always when it becomes accentuated whether it is a human or some other being it is not a divine state of being the light beings do not seek power they seek an ever widening capability to give and receive love everyone wins in that scenario there are no losers there are not givers and takers there are not the powerful and the weak there are only sharers of a loving and joyous enterprise that is a paradigm beyond the awareness and capability of the reptilian they are powerful beings they are one of the players here now they are serving in a key capacity as the villains in a scenario that will be brought forward more and more that there are benevolent and destructive extraterrestrials and that we will need the benevolent ones to stand up to the bad actors and their technology this is a disinformation so in bringing forward information about them i added to the knowledge and awareness that something sinister was happening and this planted useful seeds in many people there were many times when more human looking extraterrestrials would interact with abductees and coupled with the implantation of mind control imagery came away with a glorious impression of a benevolent extraterrestrial race who were friendly and wishing to help this is harder for reptilians to do unless they are shape shifting as humans themselves and so they will be a key player in what is coming and they are a force to be reckoned with and they are being used as a tool by the extraterrestrial alliance to play a key role not only in running society but preparing things for darker endeavors what was your most profound discovery after your transition when i returned to the light from the perspective of having undergone an awakening during my time as a human in learning about the alien presence and seeing the consequences for the many people i endeavored to help and did so much research to study and support i had a further awakening on my return to the light and of course this was an amazing revelation from that prior perspective to return to a state of knowing in a broad way and seeing everything taking place once again within earth plane and how so many things are happening behind the scenes and also right out in the open under everyone's noses 
but yet accepted as inevitable and thought of as something very much in keeping with human history and capability. And even though illogical things will still be accepted as reality when in fact they are not, they are a manipulation. So from the level of the light, we see the hand of the interlopers everywhere. They are in charge of your world at the moment in a functional sense because they control directly through their membership or through mind control manipulation at the leadership levels of all institutions and all the reins of true power in finance and government. This includes the military as well. So you have no one to turn to and this is the sad state of things. It is no different now than has been so for many, many centuries of subjugation where the government and the military were always serving the darkness. So those few who stood up to the powers that be paid the ultimate price again and again and again. These were all examples of the workings of the divine to bring in someone to speak the truth, to raise questions, to give a countering voice, and to give encouragement to those who knew there was unfairness and not knowing why had a divine inspiration within to reach for something better. This is how the divine realm has kept things going to breathe the life into humanity and bring them back again and again into the fray to champion the cause of the light and to keep hope alive. This is the state of affairs now that there is a giant boot heel on the planet ready to crush humanity as a whole. Things have reached a kind of intensity that is unprecedented because humans have grown in their power and awareness despite all efforts to the contrary to hold them back and keep them down. So we see now the many individuals on this front and who are bringing forward truth and divine teachings. There are many false prophets and manipulated voices as well. There are often divine messages given, but without a solution, without an action step that could make those people truly effective in turning the tide. What is needed for everyone to take a stand, to make a divine compact with the highest of levels, the divine creator, and to decide once and for all, I stand with creator and with the light. I choose to not serve the darkness and I choose to be my divine self. You are part of Creator and are part of Creator's energy. And this is the greatest of knowings. This was not in my awareness while I was alive. And what a delight to return to the fold and know how truly special we are. We are so dearly loved and cherished by Creator because we are a part of Creator. And this is why each life has meaning and each life has importance. 
each human being is in training and also contributing to the cause to have the human experiment reach a successful developing expansion so the human will be able to be in a state of autonomy that is unprecedented in all of history and this is the potential for what is going on right now it goes far beyond the meaning of human existence as you know and experience it this has ramifications for eternity for the entire universe in the way things can proceed and expand this is what is taking place at this very moment things are being decided each and every day each and every moment who will win out will it be the voice of darkness wanting subjugation fear oppression suffering and the demise of human to favor themselves or will it be the spark of divinity that still flickers within the human heart that will help them stay strong and overcome the suppression and catapult humanity forward as a divine outreach unprecedented and beyond your ability to appreciate this is the creator's plan and all have come down into their current lives to contribute to this plan whether they know this or not whether they feel it within themselves or not this is why the light workers yearn for a role and are so unsure of what it might be this is why everyone wishes for greatness it is the inner yearning and inner awareness in a deep level that there are high stakes indeed for all of humanity this is the picture as i see it from where i am now the divine experiment requires humans to pass this test to surmount their problems through their own initiative through gaining the inner wisdom and prevailing through inner strength in having the reliance on divine inspiration and divine support wanting that inviting it to join them and then proceeding from there if you remain isolated and want to do this on your own you will indeed be on your own and you are no match for the extra terrestrial cabal they will overpower and crush you they have this capability so the divine wishes for you to get on board and to make a choice this is in a sense a final test of who can be awakened and who cannot and who can see the wisdom in these words and embrace love and especially embrace the love of creator it goes beyond human love and it has the power needed to help human prevail and if you deny the participation of creator and creator's love you will likely fail so this is the choice the time is now you are being called to action here 
this is quite serious and this is my opportunity to reach beyond the veil and to my great delight as well as great surprise from my human perspective the possibilities are here to have such a discourse and a revelation this is something that is open to all all can participate and all are in this already your lives are at stake and your future is at stake and the range of possible futures is at stake so ponder these words and reach to creator for inspiration and guidance and it will be granted okay thank you barbara and thank you for your contribution during your incarnation thank you for your book and the work you did with all those people while you were here and with that i would like to ask carl to come back Okay, well, once again, we're we're getting the 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 grim picture of yeah. uh, things being out of knock uh, knock 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 knock. <laughs> so I I'm sorry to all the sensitive viewers who may regret now having tuned in because they're feeling really perturbed, and that is not the point of these messages and. It's inevitable that some will be quite disturbed, and and uh, but that's a part of learning, a part of growth. Right, and we have we have the comment section open on the videos, and that and that and that's going to stay that way. So if somebody's you know sees this and they have a negative response or whatever it is, it doesn't matter. Go ahead and put it on there. I mean, the more intelligent and thoughtful ones are, of course, invited. I get all kinds of comments, but they're all, you know, I leave those comment sections open. And for anyone who's looked into Carla's work, you know, what we've heard today is not a great departure. You know, she um, she went through a lot of darkness, you know, in, in her work, um, you know, with helping other people in her own life, and especially towards the end there. You know, there's three attempts on her life, um, allegedly, the second one um, resulted in the death of her husband, and the third one was apparently successful. And that was, and according to what we've heard here, it was a murder. I had uh, nine questions. Uh, as typical, um, they know the qu they know the questions, right? So what was happening was that I was asking a question, and they would answer the following question in the answer to the first question. So we ended up only um, using seven of the nine because actually all nine questions were answered in, this, in the process of answering seven. So I'll make sure I, that I get those corrected ones to you um, for your transcripts. Um. Well, it was interesting uh, to me, and I, I was not surprised by her uh, description of her passing and the, uh, the underlying reasons and so on, because I did check this out uh, because someone who watches your videos, your interviews, sent me an email and asked me about her and what happened to her truly. You know, was there something sinister underlying the series of, you know, near deaths and then the, the demise? And and so I, I, in a channeling with Creator, I asked Creator, you know, was this person killed? And I was told, yes, they were murdered. And it was the usual suspects. So the, the, the funny thing about all of this is there are no secrets for those who know how to go and get answers and the true information. It's only because we're diminished as humans that we're in this state of affairs where there can be all of the secret doings and the hidden secret societies and the agendas that are never revealed and Everyone is kind of doing things under the table and, and so on. As light beings, 
we know, can reach everywhere and know everything. That's how this is supposed to be. So this is all emblematic of this descent, this fall that happened to take us away from the light and operating on that level. Right. And that was because of this dark spirit interference and influence. Right. And then the, the Anunnaki came in and downgraded us and closed off our connection to the higher self to a large extent. And that took away our, our intuitive ability and our intuitive reach. Right. And so now we're all wandering around in the dark and, you know, trying to do the best we can. But we still have some of it. Yeah. And it's, it's available to us, but we need to we need to think in those terms like there are no secrets. You know, if we yeah. if we try to live that way and think of the world that we live in that way, then it just it, it hastens the time to which or we can make it a reality for ourselves in our own consciousness. And that's why I'm always banging on that reveal and forgive drum. You know, because you really can't, you can really can't progress until the light is shined onto everything. You know, and it just so happens where the light is not shining is on the dark stuff, and it, you know that's part of the healing process. Is that stuff has been hidden for so long, so that's what needs to be revealed. And then once it's revealed, then we can forgive it, and then invariably something else is going to come up because we didn't get to this situation that we're in, in in two days. You know, it took thousands of years to get. To where we're at now, but we have to start somewhere. So well, and I love that message of yours, and I learn more all the time about the spiritual wisdom and the the simple precept yeah. to to forgive it, because we need to forgive the interlopers and we need to help them to heal. Right. And how are we going to do that? You know, put them in first aid tents and minister <laughs> to them with some kind of medicine, that's not going to work. Right. And I love what you said. If you, know, if, you, if you want fewer victims, heal the perpetrator. Yes. You know, this is it, a, it, it's in the same, it's in alignment with the reveal and forgive thing. And it really, it, it's an, another expeditious activity. You know, if you want to, if you're just around doing triage all the time and, you know, helping the worst of the worst, that's good. But if you if you if you heal the perpetrator, then guess what? There's fewer victims, right? Absolutely. Like you were saying you were you were the one who taught me that. Yes. Well, and I got that from the light, and I've had many discussions about that. And this this is part of my healing protocol. When I work on someone and and work on attacks against them, psychic attacks of all kinds, real high level things like curses and and uh, black magic attacks and so forth, I always work on those perpetrators. Yeah. I have them worked on in parallel, not to manipulate them, but to invite creator to bring in love for them and raise them up. Right. It's a different sort of thing. You know, there's one question, Carl, that, 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 I, that I don't ask that, uh, on some of these subjects that I kind of wish I did. Because it's it's a very heartwarming, positive aspect of it, and I think about well, here's Barbara. You know, she didn't have a successful transition. You come in, you do a spirit rescue, and she gets to reunite with her. Well, you know what? I don't even know about her husband, whether her, her husband had a successful transition or not. But but apparently Carla was in the light, and I think about well, there's these reunions that are happening after they transition. I mean. You know, after they go through the spirit rescue and they get to reunite with someone who's in the light that they didn't have contact with, you know, and I, I'm trying to picture what that must have been like for her to reunite reunite with uh, Dr. Carla Turner, who you know they work together, you know, and you know what that you know what that I have a, an idea of what that must have looked like, but I really don't know. I would like so I'm going to try to. In, uh, incorporate some of those kinds of questions in the future. I think just be just because I think it would be nice for people to hear what that must be like to reunite with somebody that they were close with in the while they were living. Sure, sure. Yeah. It, this this is this all is so fascinating, and who would have ever have thought this even happens? Yeah. But it does. I did a spirit rescue recently for Jackie Kennedy. And I happened to watch the movie Jackie that you know was you know Netflix or whatever, and 
And of course, it's very grim of all about the assassination weekend, but you know, a, a pretty good portrayal of the enormity of that event and on her personally. And I had this kind of thing in my head, you know, about her, and I just I couldn't shake it. And and I know they were pinging me, you know, to have this idea. Maybe I had to check and be sure she's okay. You know, she died not all that long ago. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was of cancer and so on. So she had, you know, a tough life in so many ways and, and a difficult ending and so on. She was not in the light. She was so dragged down by depression, she had trouble when she transitioned. She could not see the light callers. And so it's not uncommon. Right. But, you see, this is the thing, you know, my students could have done in this training that I did. And I had in mind some some celebrities to have them do a rescue for anyone who didn't have a loved one that yeah. they want to check on, you know, right. because this is, this just happens. Right. Fame is not a currency of the light. No. It doesn't matter, you no. know, your financial status and your fame. And, and nor is it somebody who would be considered awakened in, you know, the circles that I'm in, you know, this is a woman who really learned a lot of stuff and conveyed a lot of stuff and helped a lot of people but yet she was subjected to that uh, circumstance where she was targeted and then perhaps as a result it was not able to successfully transition you know which is kind of, which yeah. you know actually I was kind of surprised you know I, I was kind of expecting to hear that both of them were in the light um, but you know, I don't well, know. It's, it's good to ask. It's good, you know. It's good to it ask. It is. It is because it, everyone's got issues and problems, and oftentimes those people you see, you know, through a book cover and <laughs> look at the work, or you see them on, you know, Denny's YouTube channel. And stuff, <laughs> right. They have another life behind the scenes where they struggle and and yeah. things happen, and their loved ones are suffering, and there's so many things out of their control and. We're all human. We're all battered about, and you know right. it's the sea of life we're traversing. And so things things are we're, we're more complicated. We have many different sides. Right. So it, it's not surprising things can happen to people. Right. And many people are just not prepared to transition just right. from an idea of wanting something. So many people are no longer religious, and they don't think about the hereafter. Yeah. Well, or, or I, I even envision a scenario where they're, they are very spiritual and they are very um, knowledgeable about the whole aspects of being in the light and all that stuff. But then, you know, they could be overtaken by a disease or something like that or go into a, a phase of dementia where they lose contact with those principles and those ideas and those practices and those things that, that, were, that they were able to do for themselves to keep themselves spiritually fit. And then they, then they transition and they don't get the, the, that stuff is not intact with them during their exactly. death. So, yeah. yeah, so Jackie, Jackie Kennedy is a good example of that, where she was so dragged down by depression, she could not make any kind of connection in her thoughts to something better. And that put her at a disadvantage, yeah. because the problem in this setup that we're a part of is we have total authority over ourselves. And so if we're suffering, it's viewed by the light as our choice. Our challenge is to figure out what to do about that and how to govern our energies and raise ourselves up enough where we can handle our day-to-day -day things. Right. And when, when we falter, we have to find our way back. Now, we can ask for help, but we have to ask to make that happen. That's the message here. We need to start asking. We need to get back on on track with, you know, not going to church and bowing down, but acting for asking for a partnership with right. the divine to assist us, right, and to keep us inspired and healed and protected. And, we, and a lot of a lot of that has to do with like if, if you're doing something, then oftentimes you'll need help to do something. And I think that's one of the things that, that with this mind control and everything is we get to a point where the apathy is so strong, there's really nothing to do. So if you've got nothing to do, why would you need help? So you don't ask for help because you're not doing anything. Yes. So, well, and so, you have to, so sometimes the first question is like, well, what do I need to do? 
and then answer that question and then once you find out what it is understand that you're probably going to need to help help to do it because most of the things that we find that we're not doing are things that are important enough that that we can't really do all by ourselves yeah so absolutely yeah so in a sense we do have the power to do th everything ourselves it's just that one of the things we need to do ourselves is to partner with the divine. Yeah. It's kind of a but, conundrum. <laughs> well, yeah, but but yet that is great power if you think about it. Right. You know, you have a bodyguard, right. but you have to know that, right. and you have to believe in it, right. and you have to ask them to come to your aid. Yeah, and, you, and without your bodyguard, you wouldn't be there in the first place. That's true. That's <laughs> true. Yeah. Okay, Carl. Well, I'm I'm glad uh, you're back and available. I, I'm. Uh, it's a bittersweet situation that you're so busy because I, I feel like our ability to 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 uh, schedule these interviews is is being challenged. But but that's probably you know we could, we probably could have foreseen that at some point. Um, but we'll we'll just deal with it. And, well, we'll uh, we'll make things happen because I think this is quite important. So I'm all I'm all for it. Okay. And I know I know the information can be unsettling, and it will, you know, be in conflict with what others are saying. It's inevitable, and yeah. so I'm just trying to offer the information. I'm not trying to attack anyone or take anything away. Right. This is only adding another option for people, and it's one that doesn't get in the way of anyone doing anything else. You can still watch the skies. You can still wait for the big ascension or whatever you believe is coming. That's okay. But if you also do a prayer on a regular basis, just something very simple, you know, to ask to be raised up, ask for darkness and negativity to, to be given a love healing and a love solution. Right. Bring us more love. Raise us up. I'm ready. I'm ready to shine your light in the world. Okay. That's not something that's going to take away from you. Right. right. It's personal. It's private. And simple. Right. If you hold that idea in your heart, you will have a power you've never had before. And I see that every day in my work and helping people and reaching out to creator to do things for them and then seeing something happen. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of miracle that is available, and we need a miracle right now. <laughs> maybe a couple. <laughs> right, maybe a couple. Okay, well, thanks again, Carl. Thank and, you. Uh, and we'll, um, I'm going to be going away for a few days, but I'll get back in touch with you, and we'll we'll schedule another interview. We've got a we've got a very interesting lineup, uh, including another um, channeling session with Creator. We've got we've collecting some some, some more questions for that. And, um, yeah, and, and again, this is something where the viewers can weigh in. Absolutely. And we, we did our first channeling with Creator really in response to viewer questions. Yes. About why aren't we getting help from the benevolent ETs and what's happening and why you know, are we in this situation right. and, and you know what's the problem with the divine realm that they're not helping and you know all these sorts of things. That's fine. Yeah, and you the know, only and the only thing that we're not going to do is um, we're not going to single people out. Um, you know, in terms of like, oh, this is the truth teller and this is the person who's not. You know, we're not. This isn't a witch hunt. You know, we're not going to be using these channeling sessions for for outing people or, or vetting people or. Um, you know, we're going to speak in general terms for so that people can take the information and make their own decisions about what's going on out there. Uh, it's very controversial, but this isn't this isn't. Um, and then you know, and actually, Carl and I don't have a lot to to um, to be concerned about this because usually the responses that we get from the light beings, and correct me if I'm wrong, are going to avoid situations that's just going to create what what you were calling karmic entanglements. So we're yeah. we're not going to you know be put in a situation where we're in a, a you know fist fight or an argument or that kind of thing about he said she said you know there's enough of that going on so this will be dealt with in 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 broader terms so that people can apply those broader principles to to spe specific situations as it applies in their own life in their own 
um, inquiries and their own investigations. So that I would just ask people to respect that um, as much as they can. I, not everybody understands that. It, it you know it even took me a while. Um, you know we're we're just human and we're 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 kind we're kind of we have proclivities towards like well is is what so and so said the truth and that kind of thing, and they they're going to want you to channel creator to say yes or no those kinds of things. So we're we're going to I guess we're going to try to not pull any punches, but we also have to be diplomatic and we and we do have to be uh, sensitive to the whole issue of karmic entanglements and that kind of thing. Well, people need to put their thinking caps on a bit here to understand our messages in that context because we're not going to take on people and name them, talk about their specific phenomena that might be completely bogus, and we know that. But that would put the spotlight on them and their message in particular. Right. So if, if, if we give a message that conflicts with that in a kind of a broader way, that's the clue. We are, in fact, calling them out indirectly. Right. And so people are going to have to put the, the, the information together and, and uh, think a little bit. Right. Because it is important to, to counter the disinformation. But we don't want to do it through conflict. That's, okay. that's not divine. Right. The war is a human... Well, it's actually a dark being uh, agenda. Correct. And we've gotten drawn into that perspective. And now we think, well, this is what we need to do. Right. We need to win our wars. And we might need a war here and there to advance our agenda. Okay. Right. But we win. It's a, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. And, that, and, that, and I'd like to think that what we're doing is contributing to that cycle ending. Yeah. And you know that that's the purpose of this thing is is a forgiveness and a healing um, process that we're going to go through to kind of take us out of that realm where we're trying to fight fire with fire all the time, yeah. which is ultimately not very productive. So with that, Carl, I'm gonna I'm gonna right. I'm gonna have to depart, and uh, I want to thank you once again, and and we'll be back with more. And uh, thanks to everybody for joining us. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.